Besides Apple's Worldwide Developer Conference in San Jose, and that means new software, iOS 13. We're talking about the iPhone, not the iPad, because the iPad has its own version of iOS, now called iPad OS. So iOS 13 is software that's now available in developer beta. It's going to be hitting public beta in July, and it's going to come out for download for everyone else in the fall. So what's it all about? Last year, iOS 12 packed a lot of improvements that improved the general efficiency of the software. It worked on a lot of older devices, helped devices run better. Now there are some new things being introduced. The cutoff point is iPhone 6S, but there are a lot of things that you get added to the equation that are really cool. One, which a lot of people are excited about, is dark mode. So we'll just start with that. Dark mode is, well, the ability to turn everything dark. And you've certainly seen that in a lot of apps. The Apple Watch has that, Mac OS has that. And on the iPhone, it's going to be across the board. So you're going to get in every single app. And what's it for? Well, if you want to have some cool dark mode apps, but also it could help if you're using it at night. In fact, Apple has the ability for this to activate at night. So it's kind of like a power down mode, maybe. Helps you feel a little less intense or use it in the dark. So that's dark mode. Apple Maps, would you believe that that is a really cool feature? I only say that because a lot of people may have given up and defaulted to using Google Maps, which is fair. Apple Maps is aiming to get you to come back, and Apple Maps has been scanning the US, trying to get much more interesting, accurate 3D data that's going to hit everyone in the US by the end of 2019. Apple Maps also has some stuff that looks a lot like Google Street View. It's not called Street View because this is Apple, but you're going to pop down and look around the environment and get these cool 360 degree environment things and move in a much smoother 3D type way along the street. So it almost feels like virtual reality. There are certain markers and points that you can tap on for information. Maybe you could project and imagine that this is a view of some sort of Apple AR future in Maps. That's unclear at the moment, but I mean, Apple is doing a lot of other AR, so I think that's pretty interesting. But Maps right now is about having nicer looking maps, better locations, that sort of pop out street view type uh, 360 degree environment. Uh, that's what Maps is about. One thing I really love is the single sign-in feature that Apple is going to have. Sign in with Apple, which could be the best feature in iOS 13 period. If you've ever felt apprehensive about signing into a site and trying to figure out whether you create a new account, what you do, Apple's enabling this way to use this to sign in with your Apple ID credentials, but not really. You're using it as a shortcut to sign in, but you can also create a additional burner email account that could be used to sign in instead of your main email. So that allows you to have these emails that if you have spam coming in, you could cut it off which is fantastic. Now, it remains to be seen how many apps are going to incorporate this. But if that really takes off, not all people are going to want that. I mean, certainly Facebook, I'm sure, and others will want you to sign in, like Google, with your own Google account. But that's a really cool feature. There are some other things within iOS 13 that are really interesting that you may not be aware of. In health, there's a whole new redesigned health app, and there are now awarenesses of trends so let's say that something has changed a bit in your weight or in your heart rate. Uh, it will flag those and show you graphs over time. There's also a new feature if you have an Apple Watch that's going to work with Watch OS 6 that will show activity trends over a year. Now, I had a hard time losing weight over the past year, and I love the idea of a health app and activity apps becoming more aware of trends. That's just the beginning, but it shows that Apple is thinking about that. Another really cool thing in iOS 13 it is part of iOS 13, is ARKit. There are a couple of new tweaks to that, and there are a couple of demos here on the floor. One of them is the ability to have occlusion. Now, if you've never used AR, imagine you're putting a virtual sofa on the ground. If you can walk all the way around the sofa, and you can be in front of and behind it, occlusion is the ability to make that happen, because usually that wouldn't happen. And so it makes these virtual objects seem a lot more realistic. You can't use that on all iPhone and iPad models, only it's recent ones, but it's a really awesome new feature. The Photos app has changed a lot as well. Photos and video, first of all, there are a lot more memory-like features that allow you to browse your photos and look at them more beautifully, but there are a lot more editing tools for photos. And what's really awesome is for video. You could flip video now from portrait to landscape mode and add all sorts of filters. You could even partially rotate a video. For me, that sounds like a fantastic tool. If I'm shooting something and I want to be able to share it, perhaps that means I could not worry about the orientation at all or flip it and zoom in on the fly. So it's a lot more ability for what's already a great video camera. 
Those are some of my favorite features in iOS 13, and there are a lot more to unpack. And I haven't even gotten into iPad OS, which adds things like a desktop class browser, which Apple says will solve a lot of the problems with accessing things like Google Apps. Or in iPad OS, there's new multitasking features for your hands. You can use multi-finger for editing, or there's improved pencil support. I also didn't get in fact that iOS 13 is supposed to be a lot faster for downloads and for app launches. But we're gonna see a lot more of that when we look at the beta later this year and when we download it in the fall. So what did I think? Well, here's the thing when it comes to iOS on phones, they work really well for me. So there's not a lot of features that I have left on my list that I really feel I need. When it comes to iPads, there's a lot of stuff that I want. And when it, on the iPhone, that for me, the, the new features stand out the most. So that'll be the single sign-in with, with the Apple ID that's exciting because it solves a problem for me. Dark mode, I'm, I don't know. I've, I do read in dark mode on a Kindle. I know people are excited. It could be, you know, that could be intriguing. Uh, I love the idea of all of the, the health trends uh, in and both the health app and activities app. The question is, how will that manifest over time? It sounds like Apple is just beginning a process of what might lead to insights. So we probably won't see anything in that right away. A, a lot of these features are again, sort of in the incremental improvement territory. And things like maps, I mean, I may not even use that. So that remains to be seen how much I'll go back to that. Uh, I think, again, video editing may be the best feature in addition to the single sign-in because I use my video camera all the time for work and at home. And the ability to edit videos like that might make me go to it a lot more for things that are not just quick clips. So that's my thoughts and we'll see what the rest is like when we get to play around with it.